me to Psalm 92. I'm going to read the first few verses from verse 1 all the way to um, 4 and 5. <clears throat> Let me read. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High, to proclaim your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night, to the music of the ten-stringed lyre and the melody of the harp. For you make me glad by your deeds, O Lord. I sing for joy at the works of your hands. Amen. How great are your works, O Lord. How profound your thoughts. Verse 6 says, The senseless man does not know. Mm. Fools do not understand. Mm. Verse 7, That though the wicked spring up like grass, and all evildoers flourish, they will be forever destroyed. But you, O Lord, are exalted forever. Let me stop reading that in verse 8. It says, But you, O Lord, are exalted forever. Amen. This psalm, we do not know who wrote it. It may be one of the priests or Levite or somebody who know how to play music and write songs. This is not David. If it was David, you know, we may have this title given to David. But this is a song he was singing during the Sabbath day. And so it was a song written by somebody just for the purpose of singing unto the Lord on Sabbath day. Sabbath day was a very important day because from the beginning God ordained the seventh day and he rested on the seventh day and he made that day holy. And so even today the Jewish people celebrate the Sabbath as a day unto the Lord. There's nothing wrong in celebrating Sabbath unto the Lord, but we celebrate Sunday because Jesus rose again on the Sunday. That is why it's called, Sunday is called the Lord's Day. And because Jesus rose again from the dead, you know, we come together and worship Jesus. But you can worship the Lord every day. Praise the Lord. Amen. You can honor God every day. From Monday to Saturday, you can still worship God and praise Him and honor Him and live for Him. And Sunday comes, you come to church and get together and enjoy one another in the presence of the Lord. And, and helping one another and draw strength from each other and encourage one another and then we go from there and then continue to worship the Lord all through the day. So this psalmist says it is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name. So we may ask a question, you know, do we have to have music? Do we have to have songs? Now this is what the psalmist wrote. He says, you know what? Music enhances our worship to the Lord. You can sing songs without music also, but music, you know, is a gift from God. Think about all the animals that He has created. Birds can sing a little bit, but they cannot say the words, right? But God has given us the ability to not only produce the music with our voice, but also make it meaningfully, meaningful sound with the words that can just exalt God. So. Praising God and worshiping God is very important. It is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High. You know, I learned guitar when I was about 15 years old. I asked my mom to, you know, for a Christmas gift, I asked her to buy a guitar for me. And so I remember, you know, my mom buying the guitar and bringing it to me. It smelled really, really good. And a new guitar and uh, the varnish and the everything and the inside, I just love that guitar. That's the first instrument my mom bought it for me and I learned from there. I mean, there are times I sit on the roof of the house and just, you know, continue to play music. I make, in the beginning, you know, it didn't sound good, but I learned to, you know, uh, pick up uh, this, the music. And so started playing guitar and, and one after the other, I learned all the musical instruments that I, you know, come in contact with. And that became my thing, you know, I, I take all the instruments one after the other and just start playing. And, and the, the, every time I play something, it just makes my spirit mm -hmm. get happy, you know, and mm -hmm. joyful. 
And uh, so I said, Lord, I dedicate myself just to play your music, music unto you. And music has become a very great, important part in my life. And that is why I teach guitar or music or whatever to people so that they can somehow get the gist of it and, and you know, enjoy worshiping God. So this man says, it is good to praise the Lord and make music to your name, O Most High. And what he said in verse 2, to proclaim your love in the morning. You know, morning time is just so amazing. When you get up in the morning, it is because of the love and the grace and the mercy of God that he wakes you up in the morning. Hallelujah. Don't take it for granted. There are people who went to bed, didn't get up in the morning, right? We heard so many stories that people went to bed and did not get up in the morning. They died. But it is because of the great mercy and the love of God that He has just every day He has given us the light in our life so that we can wake up. And why we have to proclaim His love? Because of the life that He has given. So make sure that you worship the Lord and say early in the morning and praise the Lord. Thank you for your love. Amen. Thank you for loving me. You know. Sometimes we take it for granted. Don't take it for granted, the love of God. And verse 2 says, to proclaim your love in the morning. And then what happened in the night, he says, and your faithfulness at night. You do all your work all day, you know, you do everything. And then you come to your bed in the night and you take a minute and just look around. The whole day he has blessed you, he has protected you. He has just given you strength and He has given everything that is possible. It is because He is a faithful God. One of the names the Bible says about God is God is faithful. And because He is a faithful God, He wants to uh, be proclaimed and exalted. He said, Lord, I just want to thank you in the night that before I go to bed, I want to say thank you for being faithful to me. Amen. God is faithful. In other words, He never fails. That's what faithful means. God never fails. Everything else fails, but God never fails. And so thank Him and praise Him for His faithfulness. In verse 3, it says, To the music of the ten-string lyre and the melody of the harp. That means it's this man must be able to play music. Most of the uh, you know, Levites, uh, they know how to play music. They know how to sing. David was just one of them. He is from the tribe of Judah and he is into music. But most of the priests and the Levites, even today, if you go to uh, Jerusalem, you will find these people who are Jewish people who are loving the Lord and worshiping the Lord. For them, the music is very, very important. Most of the uh, Jewish songs are in minor key, right? They love to play those minor songs and they just get excited about who God is. Think about it if they come to know who is the Messiah. Hallelujah. Their life will be yeah. just, you know, yes. so amazing. Now, we know who is the Messiah. We know that Jesus came and died for us and saved us and set us free. So what he says is that I want to sing songs unto the Lord, play music unto the Lord. Look at verse 4. It says, for you make me glad yeah. by your deeds, O oh Lord. He's saying, I praise you and I worship you and I honor you because of what you have done for me. Today we heard Jerry saying about how God saved him. We heard Ruby, how God saved her. We heard, you know, Merlin and we heard uh, Jason and we heard, you know, uh, Karen tell about how God saved them. In all of their lives, you see one thing is that God cares even when you are a small little child. Mm -hmm. He knows how to connect with you. He knows how to minister to you. That is why ministering to children is very, very important. You know, we need to, uh, what do you call, the hand over the, you know, the, the light into their uh, next generation. Now, what you said is true. In the Olympics, you know, they have this fire, torch. what do you call, torch, and they go, and they there will be another person who just come and get the torch, and then that person will continue to run to further, and then somebody else will be standing, and then they will hand over the torch, and they will get it, and then keep going. One person cannot do it. That's the meaning of it. We all have to involve in it so that we will somehow will be able to connect to the next generation and minister to the next generation. Don't take it lightly. 
Your children are valuable to God. Your grandchildren are valuable Amen. to God. Your great grandchildren, if you have, they are very valuable to God, right? And so our life is just ebbing away, but God is still God, right? He wants us Amen. to lighten the hearts of people, the ch next generation that comes. I thank God for Abraham and Samson, our two children, and they got saved when they were young boys, and they didn't flinch this and that way. They just continue to focus in their life. And in the young age, you know, God has used them to minister in the schools, high schools, and now both of them are serving the Lord. What I'm trying to say is that God, for God, each one of them are valuable. Don't even think for a moment, you know, lightly of the children that God has given in your hands, your grandchildren in your hands. You know, you can make a great impact in their lives for sure, because that is one of the important things that God talked about Abraham. He said, I trust Abraham. He will tell his generations to come about me. Did Abraham do it? Yes. Abraham shared about God to his son Isaac, and Isaac took time to share to Jacob, and Jacob took time to share with the 12 tribes of Israel. And you see, that is how it goes. And, and so God wants us to just pray for the next generation somehow that we can rekindle this, this fire that we have in our church. How many of you know there's fire flickering in our church, right? Amen. In our heart, there's just fire. It's not just another church. This is a church that has the fire of God just flickering. Yes. And he's a God who wants to... Uh, you yes. know, fan the flame. Hallelujah. Yes. He wants Hallelujah. to do anything possible. That is why I sang this song. There is nothing impossible with God. My God can do anything. anything. Hallelujah. Amen. Is it too, too difficult for God to fill these chairs? No. no. This is 120 chairs. Okay. Yeah. We have 120 chairs in this place. Yes. And I, I wish, this is my prayer and my desire for all of us to work together and pray together and see God together and reach out to people together so that somehow we may be able to rekindle the fire in the hearts of people yes. and bring them all together. Hallelujah. Amen. Is it yeah. possible? Yes. Yeah. yes. We believe in a God who can do marvelous things. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. Praise yeah. the Lord. So sing of the worship and worship the Lord and praise Him in your day-to-day -day life, in the morning and even the night, and you just yeah. praise Him for His love and for His faithfulness yeah. because He desired people to worship Him. When you become a worshiper, you cannot keep quiet. Do you know that? Right. <laughs> you will just sing unto the Lord anywhere you are, right? You are in the thrift store or you are in the uh, grocery store. You are anywhere and you begin to sing unto the Lord and people will be hearing it. Amen. Peter and, and uh, Paul and Silas, they were in prison and they were singing. Mm -hmm. And just like there was a shake <laughs> while we were worshiping, there was a big earthquake when Paul and Silas were singing unto Amen. the Lord. See, they were just worshiping the Lord, and it shook the whole place, and the doors fling open, and all the prisoners were hearing mm -hmm. the songs that Paul and Silas was just singing. Amen. So you cannot be a worshiper and not share the love of Jesus to others. Yes. Right? Yeah. Worship has to just spill out in your life so that you can value people and love people and tell about the Lord to others. I will read one passage. Can you give me five more minutes? Yeah. Okay, Luke's Gospel, chapter 12. I will. I, I promise you this is the last Bible verse, okay? Luke's Gospel, chapter 12. Let me read from verse 1. Luke's Gospel, chapter 12, verse 1 onwards. Just listen to this Bible verse, okay? It says, Meanwhile, when a crowd of many thousands had gathered so that they were trampling over or one another, Jesus began to speak first to his disciples, saying, Be on your guard against the east of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy. There is nothing concealed what will be disclosed or hidden that will not be made known. What you have said in the dark will be heard in the daylight, and what you uh, have whispered in the ear in the inner rooms will be proclaimed from the roofs. 
I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body and after that cannot do more. But I'll show you whom you should fear. Fear him who after the killing of the body has the power to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Mm. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. In, in other words, God, Jesus said that you are valuable in the kingdom of God. You are so valuable. Each one of you, I tell you, you are so valuable for God. Hallelujah. And when God looks at you, you are, he looks at you as so valuable. The world may not understand that, but when God looks at you, you are so, so precious. That's what Jesus is trying to say. You are worth more than many sparrows. Let me read verse 8. I tell you, whoever acknowledges me before men, the Son of Man will also acknowledge him before the angels of God. When these guys and girls, you know, when they stood up and testified, do you know what happened in heaven? <laughs> Jesus says to the angels all around and said, Did they not tell you? Look at my kids. You know, they are just standing up and testifying what I have done for them. You know, how I saved them. And the angels are hearing about it and they don't know salvation. You are so precious, you are valuable, and Jesus, God himself just came down to save you, but not for the angels. Even though they are created beings by God, and they have a duty to do, but they don't know salvation, but you do. Hallelujah. He has saved you and set you free. You are free because of the salvation that provided for you. We have a responsibility to acknowledge that before men. It says, whoever acknowledges me before men, the Son of Man will also acknowledge him before the angels of God. But he who disowns me before men will be disowned before the angels of God. Mm -hmm. And everyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man will be forgiven. But anyone who blasphemies against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven. Mm -hmm. People are just messing with the Holy Spirit these days. Yeah. But you have to be very careful. You know, if people say anything against Jesus, you know, Jesus said, you know, they can, if they ask forgiveness, I will forgive them. But Jesus said, warning, that the Holy Spirit is very important. We have to give honor and glory to the Holy Spirit of God because he is working so hard to reach out to people in these last days. So don't even say anything against Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit can do anything. Praise the Lord. Amen. He can save people in different ways. He can minister to people in different ways. We don't have to be the same way Jesus, you know, Holy Spirit works. And so just allow the Holy Spirit to minister to people in His own way. Okay. Look at verse 11. It says, When you brought before synagogues, rulers and authorities, do not worry about how you will defend yourself or what you will say. Verse 12 is very important, church. For the Holy Spirit will teach you at that time what you should say. We are living in an age yeah. where anything can happen, right? How many of you know there's already war going on? Yeah. There are big countries beginning to join in it. And then Russia begin to invade the Ukraine. And Ukraine is just helped by all the other countries. And uh, now Russia is helped by other countries that support Russian side. And so the war is escalating and it is not good. We don't know. You know, these big countries have uh, atomic weapons, the hydrogen bombs and everything that they piled up today. And it is a dangerous world we are in. But you know what? We don't have to fear, right? We don't have to worry about it. All we have to do is just every day thank the Lord and live for Him. Hallelujah. Amen. Because this is going to be fall down just like that. Hallelujah. When you hear the trumpet sounds, wow. just keep your eyes focused and you will yeah. be transformed in His likeness. And you will be gone and you will see horrible things are going to happen to this earth. If you think this is happening, what is happening is bad. You know, they are sending kamikaze, what do you call it? 
drones, yeah. drones to just hit places. This is nothing what is ahead of us. So we have to keep our eyes focused on the Lord. At the same time, be busy to reach out to people, to pull them into the kingdom of God. Because the days are getting darker. You have to do the job that God has called you to do for. Hallelujah. So I encourage you this morning, just get busy in acknowledging the Lord before people. Be bold. If somebody can say, I'm a gay and I'm out of the closet and, uh, and, and I'm so happy and I have a parade. If they are so happy, how can we are not so excited about what Jesus Amen. has done for yes. us, right? Yeah. Yes. We have to be. We have yeah. to be bold and strong yeah. because this is what it takes. A light cannot be put under the bushel. It has to be what? Put it down. Yeah. Lamp post so that it will shed light yes. everywhere. You, each and every one of you, are a light and you are valuable because God looks at you and He values you so much. And be a light and salt in this community that God has placed you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to pray for you this morning. It is a wonderful service. I don't know about you. I enjoy the worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And finished with the thunder. Hallelujah. Yeah. And we enjoy these testimonies. It is so amazing. I'm just full of the joy of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What God can do in all of our lives. Would you bow your heads and just, uh, you know, pray with me this morning that God, Holy Spirit, will give you that boldness in these last days. Not to give up, but to be strong in working with the Holy Spirit and acknowledge God and Christ in your life before men. When you do that, and Jesus said, I will acknowledge you before the angels. Amen. Would you be willing to be a witness for the Lord? It is a precious, precious thing to be used of God. Would you present yourself, your body, mind, and spirit, and say, Lord, I lay it on the altar. I want to be used of you, Lord. Oh, Holy Spirit, just fill me and give me the strength and the power from above so that I can rely on you, Holy Spirit. I will listen to you and work with you so that your name will be exalted, Jesus. Lord, we especially pray for the children in this community, the young people in this community. Lord, our hearts desire, this church desires to minister to the young kids in this community, Lord. Lord, and we ask of just challenge us and call us and give us the strength so that we will do great exploits for you. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, just talk to us and minister to us and change us, challenge us, Lord. I pray, Lord, in these last days, help us to be used of you. We are the clay in your hands, O Holy Spirit. Mold us, make us, and fill us according to your will and purpose. According to your will and purpose, let not our will be done, but your will be done in all of our lives. Lord, we be glorified in and through our life. We love you, we bless you. Bless each and every one of us in every possible way so that they can be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name we pray. Every heart said, Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Look at somebody and say, I'm so glad I was here today. <laughs>